My 100 is KMXD, Des Moines. First with CD quality digital HD. My 80s, my 90s, my 100. You're going to get in your red car and ride, baby. That's Prince. Mike Buss and friends in the morning. What day is it, Chapel? It is Hump and hump Please Day. day. That's it. <laughs> Every Wednesday we call it Hump Day. We can finally see Friday. It's my 100. Nice to have you here. And at 710, Chapel's got the time for you to listen for all the money today. And then tomorrow, something magical happens 10 times tomorrow 10 times and at 7 10 we're going to give you those uh times to listen for the big money and each time the money is worth ten thousand dollars you heard the lady 10 people tomorrow will win ten thousand dollars that's mm-hmm. as simple as that ten thousand dollars also we started a new feature on the show we're going to do next hour called tabloid truth or trash and if you want to go to bon jovi tonight uh, I don't know whether there's any tickets left. We had a pair yesterday, and I'm going to take a little tape of the show yesterday. Aaron was on the show and wanted to play, and we had one pair left. And this is what happened yesterday, just to show you how it works. Here we go. Number one, tabloid truth or trash, my 100. Robert Blake, according to the examiner, has just opened up a new bar. He calls it the Ha 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 Lounge. Oh. <laughs> uh... I'll go trash on that. You go trash on that, okay. California wants license plates to reveal your bad behavior. Uh, I'll go truth on that. You go truth on that, okay. President Bush's ratings are are now lower than Donald Trump's. I'll go truth on that. You go truth on that, okay. Well, first of all, I have some bad news for you. The bad news is, is that the uh, the very last one that I read to you. Is false, but hi, I'm John Bon Jovi, and you are listening to Mike Butts in the morning. But the first two were right, and you're going to Bon Jovi, man. <laughs> All right, yeah, he's a happy man yesterday. So we'll do that coming up next hour at 7:23 right now. You know, I was noticing something the other day. Maybe you can help me out with this. You go into one of these nail salons now, and all the women that are doing the work, not the customers, but the women who are actually be, are performing. You know, the manicures. Mm-hmm. They're like wearing one of these. Uh, one of these masks, like Michael Jackson used to wear. Well, probably the reason why is the chemicals uh-huh, that they're using. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Put, right, right, right. And the customer is sitting there totally unprotected. <laughs> it's kind of like when you go in to get an x-ray, and then they run in the next room and they push the button. <laughs> Stay in here with me. Well, the chemicals kind of make you high, so okay. the customer wants to get high. And I don't think person... I want to get high. <laughs> they're wearing that mask for a reason. You should get a mask. <laughs> well, I do my own. You wear a mask? No. You must have nice chemicals. <laughs> oh, I can tell by the music, it's time for today's story. And uh, the story I chose for you today is perfect for Valentine's, actually. Uh, and it's a little girl, a very sweet little girl, who's in the second grade. And she comes home from school and she tells her dad she learned that the history of Valentine's Day that day. And then she asked her dad, Dad, since Valentine's Day is for Christian saints, And we're Jewish. Will God get upset with me if I give Osama bin Laden a valentine? And the dad was really taken aback. And he says, well, no, honey, but why would you want to give Osama bin Laden a valentine? She says, well, you know, I thought that if a little American Jewish girl like me could have enough love to give Osama bin Laden a valentine, he might realize that we're not all bad and maybe start loving people. And if other kids saw this and they sent him a valentine, he might start going all over the place to tell everybody how much he loved them and didn't hate anybody anymore. Well, I can tell you right now that the father's heart started to swell with pride. And he said, honey, that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. And his daughter said, that's right, daddy. And once we get him to come out in the open, then the Marines can blow his ass to kingdom come. (laughs) (laughs) And there's the story of Valentine's Day. And now why don't we just segue right over to Lynn Michaels in Time Saver Traffic and find out how the roads are on this Valentine's Day Eve. Good morning, Hello, Uncle Lynn. Lenny. How are you? <laughs> good morning. I like that one. That's good. Well, thank you very much. It was perfect for the time, I think. It's a sweet little story. It, it is really sweet. Is. She's yeah. a cute little girl. That's <laughs> right. You're going to have to wash your mouth out with soap now. <laughs> <laughs> we blew half a bridge to Kingdom Come over the weekend. Okay, you heard Chapel earlier about how to be a good host. Your host is in party. When you get to the company Christmas party... Be very, very careful. That's right. People are watching. <laughs> Promotions are made or going right down the tube with the Christmas party. And don't even think about getting cozy with the boss's wife. <laughs> Kiss of death number one. You know, it used to be that companies uh, really let out. Now, if you find out, I don't know about your Christmas party, but we have a cash bar. And that's because I think people are afraid of the liability. You know, if they, if they give away the free liquor, 
Uh -huh. And then you run out and you do something dumb. It's kind of like now all of a sudden, you know, you sue each other with the drop of a hat anyway. So yeah, that's true. Don't overdo it, please. I have a question, and it is driving me absolutely nuts. And here's my question. Why do you women want to talk to us when we're in the bathroom? <laughs> I have to know. You're laughing because you know it's true. Because you can't go anywhere. Why? I don't know. I it's used to a, do that to my dad. It's a private place for private stuff, yet it seems that when a man is in the john, that's when his woman is going to want to talk to him. What is up with that? Everything from what you doing? Because you can't do it. You can't go anywhere. How was your day? You're, we've got you cornered. You wouldn't believe what happened at work today. What do you want to eat? Now listen. That is too much. When a guy is in there doing what you're doing in the room that you're supposed to be doing it in, the, <laughs> and the last thing I'm thinking about is what do I want to eat, okay? I don't care whether you're a rich man, poor man, rich woman, poor woman. What comes out of that bathroom is not exactly Calvin Klein's obsession, if you get my drift. So Saturday, I'm in there, and she goes, Richard Pryor's dead. Now, I, I, like, I like Richard Pryor a lot. Right. But I'm sure Richard, wherever he is right now, would agree with me that news could have waited. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm in, the, I'm in my men's room slash study when she runs down and says, Hey, Mike, honey, Richard Pryor's dead. And I'm thinking, I know this could have waited. You know, my ex-wife was this way. <laughs> my ex-wife would just walk right in when you're, in, you know, doing your duty in the in the bathroom, and I would just it would just ski me right out. I want you to see me my best, not at my worst. I have no idea why we do that, and but we do. do. Your, yeah. Is there anyone who can tell me the answer to that? Two eight eight six four nine nine. It drives me nuts. I mean, it really does. And so I thought one time, and not with Beth, because she's the best lady I've ever had in my life, but. But uh, with my ex-wife, who I was with for 14 years, she would just walk right in. I'd be in the bathroom, and, and it's like, you know, you feel terrible. You don't want, you don't want to look well, you're bad. You're not doing anything but sitting there reading the paper. Well, you know, it's a bathroom's <laughs> for. So I decided one time I was going to try to break her of it. I uh -huh. thought, okay, I had this strategy. I thought, okay, I'll fix you. So one day when she's in the bathroom... I just walked right in and go, hey, how you doing? She goes, hi, sit right down. <laughs> we don't care. Have a seat. <laughs> I said, no. This strategy didn't work very well. <laughs> All right, 725. I don't know what it is. It's a girl thing, I guess, a woman thing. Yeah. It's because we can't go anywhere, huh? Yeah, I think it is. Does Doreen ever do that to you, Lynn? Uh, no, never. She starts conversations while she's upstairs and I'm downstairs, though we have to scream at each other. I don't like that too much, but no, she leaves me alone in the bathroom. She's a smart woman. Yeah, and I leave her alone, too. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that. No, no absolutely you. not. No. Well, you're a lucky man. I am. I Maybe am it's just me. <laughs> I'm blessed way over time and time again. My 80s, my 90s.